Welcome once again to Statistics and Probability. This is John Lin S.L. Mario. Today, we will be discussing Constructing Probability Distribution. After going through this lesson, you are expected to Construct the probability mass function of a discrete random variable and its corresponding histogram. Computes probabilities corresponding to a given random variable. So, simulan na natin. Pero bago yan, recall mo na natin yung previous lesson. What is statistics? Very good. The science that concerns the collection, organization, analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. What is a random variable? A function that associates a real number to each element in the sample space. It is a variable whose values are de determined by chance. What is a discrete random variable? Variable which the set of all possible outcomes are countable. Okay, good. Proceed na tayo sa lesson proper. Probability. It deals with the study of randomness and uncertainty. It provides methods for qualifying the chances of likelihood of certain possible outcomes to occur. So, ano daw yung chance? So, it's all about chances. Pagdating sa probability, mangyayari ba o hindi? And most likely, Gano kalaki ang posibilidad na mangyari yung isang bagay? Ayan, very good. So, meron tayo mga types ng probability. Una, subjective probability. A personal assessment of the likelihood of occurrence of an event based on all evidences. Has no formal calculations and only reflects the subject's past experiences. So, subjective probability, ito yung pansarili lang. Halimbawa, oh, piling ko... Piling ko magkakapera ako ngayon. Ano chance na magkapera ako ngayon? So, nakadepende sa iyo yun. Ikaw lang nakakaalam nun. Ah, hinala ako, ganito to. So, although wala kang ebidensya, pero base sa mga karanasan mo, alam mo na yung mangyayari. Halimbawa, tatawid ka. Eh, walang biglang may humaharurot na sasakyan. Ay, naku, mababangga ako. So, ikaw naman, aatras ka. Bakit? Kasi malaki yung chance na mabangga ka base dun sa mga napapanood mo or nakikita mo. But then again, walang formal, cal wala kang calculation na ginawa. Kuha ba? So, subjective probability. Empirical probability defined as the proportion of times that a particular outcome occurs in a very large number of observations or experiments, also called experimental probability. So, ito yung paggawa, ah, uh, Nakabase ito depende sa number of obser observations or experiments. So, kung ano yung nagiging outcome. Next is the classical probability. Ito yung madalas na nababanggit sa inyo sa school or nagawa nyo na before. A simple form of probability that has equal odds of something happening. So, nakakompit natin ng probability. Eh, meron tayong formula. Probability of an event is equals to the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. So, meron tayong pinagbabasihang bagay na kinukompute na kagad natin. Kahit hindi pa natin ginagawa or pinag-experimentuan, makukompute na natin yung chance. Unlike the empirical probability, hihintayin muna natin yung outcome. Eto, wala pang outcome. Iche-check muna natin base sa nangyari. Okay? Ayan. Base dun sa uh, possible outcomes na pwede mangyari. Ayun. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Next. Discrete probability distribution, also called probability mass function, consists of values of the random variable can assume and the corresponding probabilities of the values. So, eto yung discrete probability distribution, eto yung kasunod ng ating pagkuha ng random variable. So, dito kinokopit natin yung probability ng isang discrete uh, ng ating discrete probability distribution. Kinokopit natin yung probability nito. Okay? So, sige. Ito yung ating previous problem. Yung three unbiased coins. So, let y be the random variable representing the number of tails that occur. Find the values of the random variable y. So, again, recall lang natin ano yung unang step. Create a sample space. So, yung sample space determined by the Assigned random variable y. So, ano-ano daw yung mga outcomes? So, ayan yung mga outcomes niya na na-discuss natin sa previous video. 
Then, ito yung kanyang sample space. Next, create a table of, create a table. Okay. Yung kanyang possible outcomes and the value of the number of tails. So, isusulat natin dito yung outcomes sa kaliwa. Then, bibilangin natin yung number of tails sa kanan. So, bilangin natin dito yung random variable. We have 3, then we have 2. Sa pangatlo, we have 2, then also 2. Pagdating sa panglima, we have 1. 6 and 7 also has 1. Then yung dulo ay 0. Okay, good. Ngayon, sir, paano natin ito gagawa ng probability distribution? So, after natin makuha ng values ng random variable, punta na tayo sa next step. Ano yung next step? Mag-create ng probability distribution. Paano nga, sir? Ganto po. Isasummarize natin yung gagawa ulit tayo ng panibagong table. Sa left column, yung ating number of tails. Ibig, ibig sabihin, yung value neto, yung summary ng value neto. Then, yung kanyang probability. Okay, so paano yun, sir? Ganito po. Una-una, un, this is regardless. Maganda kasi kapag nagsusulat tayo ng data, hindi labo-labo, in an orderly fashion. Kung ano yung pinakamataas, usually, ganito, uh, this is how it works. Kung ano yung pinakamataas, then, pababa. Okay? Good. Ayan. So, sige, simulan natin. Ano yung value ng, ano yung mga values na nakikita natin dito? We have 3. So, yun yung una nating ilalagay doon. Next. Ano pa? 2. Ayan, nakakita tayo ng 2. So, isusulat din natin yun doon sa kabila. Next. 1. So, 1. Sulat din natin. Then also, 0. So, meron na tayong number of fields. Eh, sir, paano po, let's say, may decimal, 1.9, 1.8, hanggat magkakaiba yung number of Ah, uh, yung number of tails. Take note, hindi kayo magkakaroon ng decimal dito, why? Kasi walang 1. Point, uh, hindi pwedeng magkaroon ng decimal part dito. Kasi binibilang natin ng kamay. Hindi naman pwedeng 1.2 kasi mini-measure na natin 'yon. That's for the continuous. Ito, discrete pa lang tayo. So nabibilang sa kamay. So it's uh, most unlikely magkaroon tayo ng decimal dito. Okay? As long as magkakaiba 'yan, Kware, magkaiba, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8. Lahat yan, lahat na to, ililista mo rito. But then again, kapag nauulit, isa na lang yung isusulat mo rito. Katulad itong 2 at 1. Isa na lang dito. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Next. Yung probability. Ano ngayon ang ilalagay natin dyan? Gagamit tayo ng formula. Paano natin isosolve yung individual probabilities? Gagamitin natin yung formula na yan. Number, number of favorable favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. So, sige, simulan na natin. Sa 3, ilang 3 ang nakikita mo rito sa right column na table na to? Very good. Merong isa lang. Ngayon, inyong number of favorable outcomes natin. Ang tanong, ano ang total number of outcomes? Ibig sabihin, kung ilan lahat to? Which is 8. So, meron tayong 1 over 8. Bakit? Kasi sa walong outcomes, isang beses lang siya lalabas. Yung tatlong tails. Kuha ba? Kaya 1 over 8. Next. 2. Ilang 2 yung nakikita natin dito? We have 3. Okay, very good. Next. I-divide natin sa total number of outcomes. Which is? Very good again, 8. So, meron tayong 3 over 8. Next, yung 1, ilan? Very good, 3. I-divide ulit natin sa 8. Very good. Then, finally, yung 0 natin, ilan yung 0? Isa lang. I-divide ulit natin sa 8. Ayan, very good. So, ngayon, na-compute na natin yung probabilities ng lahat ng na, uh, lahat ng random variables. Ano na susunod dyan, sir? Ang susunod na gagawin natin ay magkikreate tayo ng histogram. Ano ba, sir, ang histogram? Histogram is the graphical representation of your data. So, for this instance, paano tayo gagawa ng histogram? So, again, ito yung table kanina ng mga values. 
and yung mga nakuha natin kanina. Paano tayo natin sisimulan yung paggawa ng histogram? Una, gawa muna tayo ng X and Y axis. Sa Y axis, again, sa Y axis, anong ilalagay? Yung mga probability. So, maganda pag nagle-layout tayo ng data, pantay-pantay yung sukat. Okay, hindi lang yung basta kung ano yung nakalagay dito, yun yung ilalagay natin. Mas presentable ang ating data kung pantay-pantay yung sukat. So, paano yun, sir? Una, ayan, ganito. 1 over 8, 2 over 8, 3 over 8, 4 over 8. Ngayon, paano namin malalaman yan? Kayo na po ang gagawa yan. Okay? Eh, sir, wala namang 2 over 8, saka 4 over 8. Yes, wala po. Pero, for the sake of present up, uh, of presenting the data, meron. Okay? Para malaman natin kung gaano ba kalaki yung agwat na mga probability sa isa't isa. Nakuha ba? Okay, good. Next. Ano naman, sir, sa x-axis? Sa x-axis, isusulat natin yung number of tails. etong data na to. Simula naman sa pinakamababa, of course. Yung 0, 1, 2, and 3. Ayan. So, ano na ang susunod na gagawin ko dyan, sir? Ang susunod na gagawin natin ay gagawa tayo ng bar graph. Ganun ang histogram, pa bar graph. So, ibig sabihin, itatapat ko lang itong 0 sa 1 over 8. Iyon yung una. Gagawa ko ng rectangle. Next, sa 1, 3 over 8. So, ibig sabihin, itong 1 na to hanggang 3 over 8. Ayan. Next, 2, 3 over 8. Ayan. And then, 3. Kung 3 na to, we have 1 over 8. At para mas uh, presentable yung ating data, shade na lang natin. That, my friends, is how you create a probability distribution with histogram. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Try pa tayo ng isa pa. Yung ating previous example, yung two balls. Two balls were drawn in succession without replacement from an urn containing... 4 red balls and 6 red balls. Let's see with the random variable representing the number of blue balls. Find the values of the random variable Z. So, paano natin gagawa ng probability distribution nito? So, again, just like in the previous video, kuha ko ng 2 balls, create ako ng sample space. So, ano na daw yung mga output? Using random variable Z, I could get 2 blue balls, blue and red, red and blue, and 2 reds. So, yun yung aking sample space. Next, magkikreate ako ng table using the sample space and the possible outcomes. So, bibilangin ko lang yung number of blue balls. So, again, ilan? Sa una, I have two. Yung kasunod, yung kasunod na dalawa, I have one. Then, yung huli ay zero. Okay, good. Next, now that I have this data, all I have to do now is to what? Create the probability distribution. So again, sa summarize lang natin. So number of blue balls. Ano-ano yung mga nakalagay dito? Numbers. I have 2. I have 1. Then I have 0. Okay, good. So next step, compute natin yung probability. Or the individual probabilities. Using this formula. So again, bibilangin ko lang kung ilan yung ilang beses lumabas yung number na ito dito sa table na to. Okay? So, for 2, we have 1. I-divide lang natin kung ilan to, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. Next, yung 1, ilang beses lumabas? Good. 2. Also, divided by 4. Yung nakagandaan kapag kinokopit natin manually. Hindi na natin kailangan kung ano yung bilang mo rito, kung tama yung bilang mo, dapat ini rin lalabas dito. Eh, sir, yung 2 over 4, pwede kong gawin 1 over half. Pwede po ba yun? Yes, pwede naman, of course. Pero kung hindi ka masyadong familiar sa pagko-convert ng mga uh, equivalent fractions, you stick to this process para di ka malito. Okay? Good. Next. Yung 0, we have 1 over 4. So, nakompita natin yung probability distribution. Ano na susunod? Of course, we will create the histogram. So, paano yung histogram? Ito yung ating table kanina. Again, sa x-axis tayo mag-start. Sa x-axis, ano ilalagay? Yung probability. Kayo na bahala. But then again, since divided by 4, lahat dapat ito ay over 4. Next, sa so y-axis yung, I mean sa x-axis, yung number of blue balls. 
So, ano-ano ba yun? Ito dapat mga numero na to Beginning with the lowest. Ayan. Next. Ayun. 0, 1, and 2. Next. I mean, gagawa ko ng rectangle or the bar graph. Itong 0 sa 1 over 4. Yung 1 sa 2 over 4. Then, yung ating 2 sa 1 over 4. Eh, sir, hindi naman natin ginamit yung 3 and 4. Again, this is just for representation purposes. Okay? Ayan. So, mas maganda again kung shade natin. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Let's start proceed with this one. Paano naman kapag ganito yung problem natin? The probabilities of a surgeon operates on 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7 patients in any day are 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.2, and point 2, respectively. Construct the probability distribution and histogram. So, paano natin susolve to? Ang pinapasolve lang sa atin ay yung probability distribution. So, ang gagawin lang natin, of course, magkikarit tayo ng probability distribution. Paano yun, sir? Isusulat lang natin sa table, or gagawa tayo ng table, yung x natin yung number of operations. Yun yung ating random variable. Pagdating naman sa probability, since given na ito, at sinabi respectively, pag susunod-sunodin lang natin, etong 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 sa number of operations. Yung probability, of course, dito natin lalagay sa kabila. Ayan. Once na ma-verify natin na tama, all we have to do now is to create the histogram. So, paano tayo magkakreate the histogram? Again, Cartesian plane, x-axis. Ano ilalagay sa x-axis? Very good. Yung ating probability. So, ano-ano yung mga probabilities? Ayan. So, kaya na bahala kung gusto nyo yung point, kung gusto nyo pa isa-isa, okay lang. Pero, mas appropriate kung palima-lima. Bakit? Kasi, dito, kung titignan natin, all, div all are divisible by 5. Kung wala to 0.15 at 0.25, pwedeng uh, by 10. Kaso, may 5 dito. So, mas maganda kung by 5. So, magsimula ako sa 0.1. 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25. Next. Sa, sa x-axis, yung number of operations or the random variable. So, gagawa na ako ng histogram by using uh, by creating the bar graph itself. Ayan. So, sa 3, 0 0.15. Sa 4, we have 0 0.2. Sa 5, we have 0.25. Ayun, mataas. Next, 0.6 and 0.7. Parehas lang. Ayan. So, eto na yung histogram. Kukulayan na lang natin. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Now, eto pa isang example na ma-encounter nyo. The following data show the probabilities for the number of cars sold at any given day in a car dealer store. Find the, Let us find the probability... That, the, that x is, when x is, less than or equal to 2. So, etong table natin, eto daw yung number of cars sold sa isang tindahan. Ito naman yung kanyang probability na makakabenta siya ng ganitong number ng cars. So, hahanapin daw natin yung probability na yung x ay less than or equal to 2. So, review lang natin. So, kung paano. Unang-una, hahanapin ko muna itong 2. Ang sabi, Less than or equal to 2. Ibig sabihin, kasama yung 2. Ayan. So, ito daw yung kailangan ko. Ngayon, ano-ano ang gagawin ko? Kailangan, i-add ko lang yung probabilities ng 0, 1, saka 2. Ayan. And by doing so, anong makukuha natin? Ang probability natin ay very good. 0.5 or kalahati kagad. Kasi 0.1 plus 0.15 plus 0.25 ay 0.5. Next, find the probability when x is greater than 6. So, all values greater than 6. Ibig sabihin, kasama ba 6? Hindi. Dapat yung mas mataas lang sa 6. Ayan. So, mula 7 hanggang 10. At ano-ano yung mga probabilities mula 7 hanggang 10? Ia-add lang natin yung mga yan. And by doing so, we will get what? Very good. Zero, uh, zero point 
1.30. So, yun yung ating probability when x is greater than. Greater than yun na Hindi greater than or equal. Greater than 6. Pati to. Okay? Ayan. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Next. Properties of probability distribution. Ito mahalaga to na ma malaman natin by heart. Unang-una, ang probability, do, para daw masabi natin probability distribution, yung isang distribution, etong mga kailangan i-consider natin. Unang-una, kailangan yung probability ng kada isa ay nasa pagitan or equal siya sa 0 or 1. Ito yun. Kailangan yung, uh, yung probability ng bawat isa ay nasa pagitan ng 0 at 1 or equal sa 0 at 1. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Next. The sum of all the probabilities of all the random variable must be equal to 1. Meaning to say, kapag in ko lahat ng uh, probabilities ng random variable, kailangan mag-equal siya eksaktong 1, sarado 1. Okay? So, yun yung dalawang properties ng probability distribution. Okay. Check natin kung probability distribution yung o hindi yung apat na to. Alin daw dito yung pwedeng mag-represent sa probability distribution? So, unahin natin tong unang example. Probability distribution kaya? Hindi daw. Bakit kaya hindi? There is no negative probability. Oo nga, walang negative na probability. Ang pinakamababang probability ay 0. So, kahit mag-equal ito sa 1, kung may negative probability yung isa, hindi siya pwedeng probability distribution. Next, ito naman, analyze natin. 1 over 10, 3 over 10, 5 over 10, 2 over 10, 1 over 10. Probability distribution kaya? Hindi daw. Bakit? Sum of all probabilities is greater than 1. Tama. Pag in natin to lahat, anong kalalabasan? 12 over 10. Ang probability distribution ay equal lang dapat sa 1. Very good. Next, pangatlo ay hindi. Bakit? Uy! Individual probability exceeds 1. So, nasan dito? Ayun daw. Lagpa siya ng 1. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya pwedeng probability distribution. Take note. Regardless kung mag-equal man to sa 1, titignan muna natin kung lahat ito ay mas bababa sa 0 at 1, ay nasa pagitan ng 0 at 1. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Next. Check muna natin. Lahat ba ng probability nasa uh, pagitan ng 0 at 1? Yes. Then, pag in natin to, ano makukuha natin? 1. So, ibig sabihin, ito ay isang probability distribution. Kasi, it satisfies both properties. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Now, let's have a recap of what we have just learned. Discrete probability distribution, also called probability mass function, consists of the values of the random variable can assume and the corresponding probabilities of the values, properties, or probability distribution. Again, una, kailangan yung probability ng bawat isa ay nasa pagitan ng 0 at 1. Pangalawa naman, kailangan, pag pinag-add natin yung kanilang mga probabilities, equal siya sa 1. Eksakto. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Now, steps in creating the probability distribution. So, yung step 1, create a sample space. Step 2, create a table. Step 3, count the value of the random variable. So, etong step 1, 2, 3, nasa previous uh, video natin. So, step 4, create the probability distribution. Step 5, solve the individual, uh, solve for the individual prob probabilities. Then, step 6, create the histogram. So, kuha ba? Okay, good. Get ready for the next for the battle. Next battle. battle. Okay, so dito sa part na to, pag-practice natin, determine whether the following distributions can represent a probability distribution. Okay, so pwede nyo muna pause yung video, then after nyan, sagutan natin. Okay, sige, challenge natin yung mga sarili natin. Okay, so tingnan muna natin kung paano, kung ano ang sagot, kung tama ba ang sagot. Sa una, check natin sa isa. Okay, so lahat yan ay pasok sa unang property. E sa pangalawa kaya, pag pinag ba natin to, ano makukuha natin? 10 plus 5, 15. Plus 5, 20. So, doon pa lang, lagpas na. Meaning to say, 
hindi ito probability distribution. Next. Uy, kita ko na agad. May negative 25. So, automa negative 0.25. So, automatic. Hindi siya probability distribution. Next. Eto kaya. Nako, kumuha ng calculator. Okay, sige, check natin. 15.15 plus 0.27 ay ilan? Point? Very good, 0.42. Ito naman, 0.29.29. This is 0.58. 0.42 plus 0.58 is equals to 1.0. Meaning to say, exacto. Probability distribution. Next. Ito kaya, 0.45, 0.25.35. Pasok sa unang probability. Pasok din kaya sa second. I mean, pasok sa unang property. Pasok kaya sa second property? Hindi. Bakit? Kasi pag pinag-add mo yan, magiging 1.1. Kuha ba? Okay, good. Next, yung ating shipment ng 5 computers. So again, paano ba natin to gagawa ng probability distribution? So recap lang natin. Shipment of 5 computers contains 2 that are slightly defective. If the retailer receives 3 of these the three of these computers at random list the elements of sample space S using D as the number of defective computers and N as the number of non-defective computers respectively. If the retailer will receive three computers, find the value of the random variable N, create the probability distribution and histogram. Okay, so ito yung may number uh, five computers na ibibigay sa May shipment na 5 computers, ibibigay yung tatlo sa retailer. Kaya lang, yung dalawa dito ay defective. Okay. So, i-count natin yung, ano yung random variable natin? Yung number of non-defective computers. So, again, by doing so, create na natin yung what? Yung, kinout natin yung number of non-defective computers. So, eto yung outcome niya. And eto yung mga number of random variables niya. Which is the number of non-defective computers. Bibilangin lang natin kung ilan yung n dito. Next, y-axis, ano ilalagay? Ayan, very good. Sa y-axis ay yung probability, very good. Sa x-axis naman ay yung number of defective computers. Ayan, so 1, 2, or 3. Ayan. Okay? Ayan. Ay, sorry, na number of non-defective computers pala yun. N nakalagay. Sorry ah. Merdyo, ano lang. Please bear with it. Nag uh, nagkaroon lang ng typo. Okay? Ayan. Okay, sige, check natin. Ano ulit yung value? We have 1 over 7, then 3 over 7, then 3 over 7. So, shade na lang natin. Nakuha ba? Okay, very good. Nakuha talaga. Ang galing. So, sana sa padori, uh, sa loob na video, ang um, finding the mean variance and standard deviation na tayo. Okay, guys? So, again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, see you on, uh, hope you can watch my next video. Okay? Bye, guys. See you soon.